Where are you? I'm right Where here. are you? We're right here. We're nowhere. Matt had to find his phone. I don't know why he needed his phone for this, but he was like, In case something happens. I need my phone. I need to go find it. So I'm, uh, we're here. Don't I'm worry, I'm Kev. Here. <laughs> it's, here, though. it's not too bad. Oh. All right. It's just you. Mm hmm. Happy weekend. It's already Friday, somehow already. I'm really worried that it's always Friday. I am kind of too. It's a little terrifying yeah. that summer is like basically over mm -hmm. and it's Friday again. I know, it was already your birthday and soon it'll be Labor Day, which signifies the end of summer-ish. I mean, not technically. And your mom's birthday. My mom's birthday. Like the fact that people are talking about the state fair makes me think like, oh my gosh, that is that's the, it? That's the signification. Like in Minnesota, that means like summer's ending and I can't. I'm not for it. I can't even. Oh, I see you get yourself. I'm fine. I don't need that much anyway. You got all little dripper drops. <laughs> Guys, tonight, today we're having leftover wine. From Matt, I, I did not drink wine yesterday. Well, Matthew did. I had part of a bottle yesterday. Because <laughs> he waited for me. So it was fun. I uh, had an appointment and then was like, I'll bring, I'll buy Culver's because it'll be like a fun thing. Bad idea. In Stillwater, I waited like over a half hour for our food to arrive through the drive-thru. It was insane. And it was one of those where I went through the drive through and I was the second car to like order. So I was like, this won't be too bad. But I ended up waiting a really long time and then I was stuck. And actually a couple car, two cars left without getting their food. Cause they were like, I'm done waiting. This is too long. I'm not hungry anymore. It was, well, but you've already paid. So it's kind of crazy. That's kind of weird to me. Like you leave without your food, you've already paid. Yeah. So then like the person comes out, looks for them. And I, I could see them being like, Where's this number? Because, you know, Culver's, for anyone who doesn't know what Culver's... What, the number's on the ground? No, they put... No. Because they put it on your wind. Yes, like, well, they did the number. They drove off. Well, it's not like a clicky anymore. It's a sticky note. It's like giving you a post-it note. Oh. So they just were looking for the post-it note number. They weren't there. And you were like, they left? I didn't tell her that. Oh, that's helpful of you? Well, you don't know how it's set up. So I couldn't have, like... She wasn't, like, by my car. I would have I don't know how things are set up anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. You, I feel like, don't know all these things. Anyway, so while I was doing that, Matt apparently was like, I'm going to have some wine because it's taking my wife hours to get food that should take, I don't know, it's called fast food for a reason. I was doing something. I think uh, I was working. I don't know. You're watching our children. No, they're doing something. By themselves. Yeah. I think I was on the computer. That's when they were playing Legos, the, making the... Anyway, oh, this is not I was, I was doing a TikTok, so I was doing Okay. I was working. So I told you I was working. Uh-huh. So we're gonna front load this with announcements today. Oh, we are. To get those out of the way. Out of the way as we leave time for questions to come in. This is a new format for today. Just for today, though. <laughs> so uh, so Culver's announcement done. <laughs> Next announcement. Yeah, send me an invoice for this ad we just did. <laughs> for Culver's, I don't know if it's a good ad. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. Still did it. Uh, we talked about this last week. I didn't have the card. The tool swap and expo. And look at this. We're getting fancy now. Where's my little things? You did close it. I did. It was out of the way. It was you in did the close it. Yeah, it was in the way. You closed it on me. You didn't tell me to keep it. I was just like, this is in the way. <gasps> Boom. Oh my goodness. We talked about this last week. Uh, if you're in the area, I will be at this. I have like a table or something. I'm sure they're going to put me like in the back. Mm -hmm. So you have to like walk through everything to get to me. Because, you know, I'm like the milk and eggs of the Where? show. I don't even. Okay. The staple? I don't think so. No? No. I forget you can't see my face. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all the information is there. There are some fantastic guest speakers as well, and those are listed on the website. There's a link to that down there in Thingamabobber that is hosted by the Minnesota Workers Guild, and it's at the Bloomington Armory. We had that. They had that two years ago uh, as well. Another announcement for them, the Minnesota Workers Guild, they are calling for entries for the next what the? Northern Woods exhibition thingy. Look at that. you. I'm finally like actually using the software to its full potential. <laughs> <laughs> Except I literally put it over my face. <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, are in the area and you want to exhibit your work, I have exhibited three pieces in the show. It's always really fun to like be there and like be like, hey, this is something I made and look at all the other stuff people have made. Mm -hmm. And from that aspect too, even if you're not entering anything into the show, just going yourself and looking at some of the stuff in person gives you an appreciation for like the work that people do mm -hmm. and like stuff. 
-hmm. In theory, this thing will be in the shell. They can't see that because it's in the... Well, then move that. I'm, I mean, even if there you, you don't, you still can't. Well, everyone knows what this is. It's been sitting on the bench for like Everybody. six months. Everybody. So, that'll be there. What day is that? 7th through the 10th. 7th through the 10th, which, I mean, we won't be there for all of it because we have a conflicting event that you probably don't even know what it don't is. Don't even know what it is. It's my mm -hmm. dad's birthday. Nope. That's the 11th. Yeah, it's not your dad's birthday. <laughs> don't even know. It's Jared's thing. Anyway. Jared's having a thing. I'll explain it later. I like this question. Is Matt bringing tools to the swap? I need a telehander. <laughs> I'll bring anything. <laughs> Oh, I'm bringing stickers uh -huh. and that's it. Just stickers, not even hats or like any merch. Eh. You know what? I'm going to make them bring the best sweaters ever that no one buys, but we only have like a that's few left because we've given them all away <laughs> to like so my friends if you, and family and Matt's friends and family. If you show up to this thing and I'm there and you happen to be the size of the things I have left, I will continue to give them away for free. Mm -hmm. That's actually a sweet deal because these sweaters, his cost alone is like over 40 bucks. Hard cost. It's a lot. It's a lot. This is why no one buys them because- You told me to buy them. I love them. You said, you should buy something like this. People like these. Guess no, what? Nobody bought them. Every person that has them says it's their favorite sweater ever. My sister, favorite sweater ever. <laughs> Your sister, favorite sweater ever. Vanessa also really likes this sweater. People who've been watching this live for the last year know, I love this sweater. <laughs> so. It's your favorite sweater. It's <laughs> not wearing it, but I'm wearing good times today. But I should have worn it. It's actually upstairs. I should have it. Anyway. So the other thing, the reason that we have a conflicting event Did is what's the big event? I want done with my announcements. This is an also announcement. Okay. And it's very important. I'm ready. What happened last week? Cow pad boy. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? I don't even know. <laughs> I just saw the email. <laughs> oh, there goes the oh, there card. So JR has always not always. He's lately expressed an interest in being in plays. He watched Hamilton and like his father got obsessed with it. And so, what are you doing? I was gonna see if I can put the, that's too small. Yeah. So I was like, he keeps saying he wants to be Hamilton, which is um, pretty, I was like, I don't think anyone around here is gonna put on a Hamilton play. And if they do- For I, kids. Well, and if they do, I don't think they're gonna um, cast a six-year-old to play Hamilton. And. But I said, I'll look around and see if we can see if there's any other like auditions. And there was. And so he auditioned for The Stinky Cheese Man, which if you haven't read that book, it is really cute. And it essentially like takes well-known fairy tales. So The Stinky Cheese Man is the same story as The Gingerbread Man. And so JR got the part of the cow patty boy, which is essentially the boy who cries wolf. So he's the boy who cries wolf, but it, with this- That sounds like him. Very- <laughs> Yeah, won't, that be, won't, won't be too much acting in this one. Okay. The so one funny thing, or it's like who cast him, they must have, no, they, I swear it feels like the universe is trying to just torture me a little bit. Because anyone who knows me personally knows that like potty talk is something I have zero tolerance for. Like not even a little bit. I can't, I hate it. Yeah, fine. And so his role is that he gets cow poo on himself multiple times and then eventually it ends with him throwing with a catapult like cow poo on a bunch of people so he's like just thrilled yeah you're not gonna like this he's thrilled he can now he's like oh my gosh this is gonna torture my mom i can't really let him do this <laughs> <laughs> so his play is running for two weeks the first weekend of october and the second weekend of october so if you're in the area you should come watch him in the play although we have like a meet and greet on sunday to like learn so it, for all i know it's like double cast so like he might only do one weekend i don't know we'll find it we'll find it <laughs> i'm in wrong. okay you're not i don't know we'll find we'll see how it goes i guess okay i don't know all right continue with your announcements what next okay. fun thing am i doing get on my way <laughs> i'm driving this steamboat uh-huh whoa what is this the internet the internet? That exists? No. No. Okay. Let's see if I can get this to work. Okay. I'm going to pop back in here somehow. I, mm -hmm. Do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, there we go. Whoa. Whoa. I think we're at. It. I don't know. I don't think it's feeding through, maybe? Yeah. I can see it on that. Should I just hear it from our... Every year in North America, billions of 
potential buffer from urban trees is cut up as far mulched or often just taken to the landfill. It's expensive to maintain, which has led to a shrinking tree canopy or landowners at large more on their property. Hi, my name is David Barr, author of Wood from the City, the Urban Look, and welcome to my Kickstarter. In 2007, I discovered the fascinating world of urban lumber when a local Okay, the concept of sawmills and lumber was fairly on a basis. Ever since, I've been on an amazing journey to better understand the irony of destroying wood grown in the city while logging a remote forest to provide us with lumber. Over the last several years, I have sought to answer a few simple questions. One, where does lumber come from? Two, how can we use wood from the existing urban tree removals for its highest and best use? And three, how do we plan for the future with urban lumber? And small scale. The second section talks about how to finish building products. Urban trees for lumber. At the end of the tree's life, we have a plan instead of throwing it in the garbage. Yeah. Wood from the city has high quality photographs, illustrations, and graphics describe the wood making process. Quality writing focused on giving you the information you need to understand the process. I wrote this book for anyone wanting to producing trees. I also kept enough for anyone that loves wood and wants to finish business. Whether you're a seasoned forester or a sawyer or a fledgling woodworker or architect, this book is for you. It's almost done since it's so choppy. I'm using a uh, camera uh, camp nice. to raise money to self-publish wood from the city. Making a high quality book takes money and resources to pay for graphic design, illustration, editing, and printing costs. There's a link in the description. The process is fairly simple. Anyone interested in my book can pre-order a copy on Kickstarter using their credit or debit card. If you'd like to go yeah. beyond simply ordering the book, there are several are... opportunities to support what? the project and get additional rewards. Currently, I have a finished book. It will take six months to design the book and have it It doesn't work, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, how do I fix this now? Go back to the camera. <gasps> but now I'm still looking at this thing. To make it bigger. Matt just doesn't want to. I can't. I only have computers. Matt, this computer's like what a million years old? It's five years old already. Five? I thought it was way older than that. No. <laughs> I don't think it can handle the whole. We're there are too many things at once. Yeah, Matt did not want to admit defeat, even though he probably should have a little earlier. But it felt like we were in high school, where it's like, all right, everyone, now we're going to stop and do a little announcement, watch a video, and then we're going to talk about it. I hope everyone took notes. Anyway, there's a week left. <laughs> a week left? Yeah. Okay. If you'd like to pre-order a copy of the book. And Matt will post a link. There might already be it. It's in the description. It already is. So there you go. You seem now so dog trod. I'm dumb. hot. That's what it is? Yeah, it's like really hot in here. Actually, when he came in, um, <laughs> yeah. I was working and he came down and he wasn't wearing a shirt. I was like, are you doing a live naked? Yes. Like, is that your plan? Too hot for this. Right. All right, so. So anyway, there's a week left in the Kickstarter to get the book. If mm -hmm. you want to pre-order it so you can get it first right away. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal has already been met, but now there are like higher level goals that are for planting trees. Mm. So if we go above and beyond that threshold or whatever, Mm -hmm. Dave's going to plant some trees somewhere. That's probably out there <laughs> on the West Coast. I like it. So we got that going, at least for a week here. Mm. I think uh, probably next spring is when it's going to be released. So if you want to get in early, you got a week left to do that and whatnot. And whatnot. And the video is there on the Kickstarter page. So you go, yeah, that's where you stole it from, right? And uh, this is a really great question. So when are you gonna write that intro, Matt? I've been, I've been just noodling it. I've been noodling it, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thinking like the direction I want to go with it. So I'm thinking the day that it's due, he'll probably do it three weeks later. That's my guess. <laughs> That's accurate because it was due August sixth. So yeah. 
oh wow, I'm. <laughs> do I know him or not? I was like, due dates mean nothing to Matt. So um, we're on my own schedule here. Yeah, don't ask him to. But yeah, thank you from art. This reminds me of film strips in grade school. Yeah, where it's like, all right, everyone, we're gonna do this. You get the general gist of what's going on. I like this from Wes. He's totally ordering that book. That's awesome. I'll order it too. I hope you order it. <laughs> You've been plugging it enough. <laughs> Well, I'm attached to it. I feel like yeah. a certain responsibility to do so. So I think it's a good thing to plug and to buy. It's an easy, I guess it's an easy thing to plug because it's a, for a good cause. It is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And even though Matt doesn't like reading. I, ha I have read most of that book already. That's, yeah. Oh, will the book be signed? Do you know? Uh, I don't know if David signed his books. Hmm. But I don't know. I think I would assume so because he's doing his own fulfillment. I mean, he could, but don't. Assume he's gonna do it. Maybe it's a stamp. I mean, it's a lot of work. Hands. I don't know. Mark signed all his books. Mark must have very strong hands. I don't know. Because <laughs> I it does. He does. He just does have gloriously strong hands. Okay, that sounds creepy. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh. I, I don't know if he's actually gonna do that, but probably an option. From Sawdust Factory, Matt. I love deadlines, especially the zooming sound they make as they go flying by. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he loves that. It's yeah, a good feeling like that. that. Is. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's a personality thing because to me, I the fact of like missing a deadline would create so much stress that I couldn't miss it because I'd be too upset about it. Matt, he has no, it doesn't hurt his conscience. Like, he's just like, that's all right. Things happen. No, no, I'll Whatever. Be, I went to college. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is such a, I went to college. What does that mean? Well, I mean, deadlines were just like an option. Mm-hmm. Especially also, group projects. Okay, I also went to college. I didn't have classes that had group projects, so. Oh, you're missing out, man. You're missing <laughs> out. <laughs> you're missing out on some uh -huh, good stuff. Uh -huh. So, Matt, how are you affiliated with this book? I'm writing the foreword for it. Mm -hmm. I found uh, Dave online, like, oh my gosh, that must have been like 2013 or something like that. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's probably like the first like biggest advocate for the urban wood thing. Okay. And as far as I know, like a lot of like the, I don't really want to call that, like, give me some, give me some words here. I don't know what you're trying to say. Promoter? I don't know, that's not a good word for it. I don't know. Supporter? Yeah, but also promoter. Okay. <laughs> so you don't want my words. Your words are bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He is, is that a, like if you go look at his TED talks, they're pretty good mm -hmm. about like that next level of like what the heck we do with these trees mm -hmm. and why are we just throwing them away? Right. And they're actually like a decent resource. Oh. And why has no one ever given this any thought? Right. And like why can't we like purposely grow urban trees for material? So he's like championing the fact that you really should start when you take down trees make some use out of it. Well, even before that, like when you plant them, you grow them to be lumber trees oh, in someone's okay. yards. So yeah, they an advocate. Be, they can be, they can be go advocate. Yeah, sure. Randy did that, that wasn't me. I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. See? Champ, whoop, advocate, also Ryan. Champion, there are a See, lot. there you go. See, everybody mm -hmm. else has got my back on this. Mm -hmm. Where Not are you me. at? Just Somebody. reading people's words. Yeah. That's the best, you know, I delegated. You're Great. welcome. Group project. There you go. <laughs> I had my first group project. It went really well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to it. There's a lot of, like, I always see provide a lot of content information on, like, urban material and stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm so far, like, this tiny little realm where, like, the stuff mm -hmm. in the book expands even more to, like, like a generalized forestry mm -hmm. vision of urban material. Do you have a link to one of his TED Talks? I do. I mean, I can find one for you. Okay, I'll just put it below. <laughs> I can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you can find it. It's his his mm -hmm. first name, David Barman, TED Talk. Um, wait, I think I'm I I'm sure saw. someone can probably find it and drop it in here or something. Is his name Epa? Yes. Okay, there you go. This is his handle. If you go on Instagram, that'll probably get you in the right direction for some other stuff that he does too. So, there you go. Cool guy. Cool guy. I've never met him, so. I haven't either. <laughs> Where does he live? Phone. Portland. Okay. All right. We're phone pals. Phone buddies? Phone, phone buddies. That's how you know you're an actual friend because Matt, he's talking on the phone like a lot, lot. He talks on the phone. Yeah, he does. 
Yeah, you do. No, I don't hate talking on the phone. I hate calling, cold calling. Okay. So, mm -hmm. oh yeah, and it does. It has all the links on his Instagram. So there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like this. We took notes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets an A plus on this one. <laughs> I was doing so well today. I know. I didn't know we were, we were testing people, but I feel this weird strength of like happiness about it. So who's here to actually help? <laughs> It's not going to be us. <laughs> We're just going <laughs> to... Oh, funny. Okay, last announcement. There's another announcement. Well, we talked about it last time. I want to formalize things for everybody. Okay. The last one was Arnfest. There's what? A, I'm sorry? There's a link to that, too. What fest? Arnfest. What is that? Vintage Machinery. Okay. Where is that? Uh, I forgot to look again. It's like I think it's Crystal Springs or what? Crystal something in Northern Illinois. Okay, I was like, what state is this? All right. When is it? September 20 something. Are you going? I think I probably will, yeah. Remember? I look at your calendar. Yeah, that's what I've been meaning to bother you about. Oh, really? Okay. How's my, how's my calendar looking, <laughs> calendar lady? Calendar lady? Mm, what a great role. I think we talked about it last week. All the weeks blur together with me. They have been lately, more than normal. I think, I... It, I think it was last week. But anyway, it's like vintage machinery, so if you're into like old heavy cast iron stuff. Oh yeah, I thought you and Aaron would maybe go. <laughs> Cause then I can hang out with Vanessa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just volunteering me for things. Mm -hmm. You just said you wanted to go. <laughs> okay, I'm putting together a bus. <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna go on a bus. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got seats to fill now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We can have a big trip, a woodworker, metal. Maybe I'll bring my bridge port. And have everybody put it back really, together. Really, the bridge port's gonna come with? Is it like? Is that be like the thing? Like C three PO coming the, with? Like, hey guys, look one at of this. the the sights to see at the show is uh -huh. Matt's bridge port, and everybody's putting it back together. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be like I'm kind of surprised you haven't done that yet with Max. That would be actually he's obsessed with Legos. He would love to put together probably a bridge port. I don't know if he would like that. It's come very on. boring compared to Lego. I don't know, dude. That it kid. doesn't quite have like the the speed oh. and like the quickness to that like dopamine hit mm -hmm. oh i got it done yeah. let's tear it apart and do it yeah. again i don't know see look at aaron tool, tool expo buddy trip exactly oh, there you go. also aaron jess and he's like we're going together <laughs> all the errands <laughs> all anyone aaron. named aaron that's it though so how the did bus. you get on then you're not aaron i'm nobody <laughs> i ain't anybody don't worry about me <laughs> oh nobody important that's for sure <laughs> that's funny oh are you going to the woodworking auction in Nielsville? I didn't even know there was one. My parents didn't tell you. Man, your parents are slacking. I know. You know they, They're watching. They decided to move and then they just like. They didn't move. They still live in Nielsville. They, they plan on moving. If anyone like, wants a house in Nielsville, I know one. And it's a sweet house. It's got three porches. A big silver maple in the backyard. Uh huh. Yeah, Matt knows all about that house. He's a. Uh, Make some good slabs. You want a, someone to clean your gutters. Oh, yeah. It's not that guy. <laughs> yeah, sweep off the roof on the garage. <laughs> That's what he did the first time he came to visit my family. Like I was like, this is my boyfriend. And they, they found him on the roof. <laughs> he was like, your parents have, don't clean their gutters. I have to do it. It was bothering me. <laughs> I could see it from the house. He made a very good impression. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Who can live like this? <laughs> what kind of people live like this? <laughs> the Watsons. This is nuts. Yes. <laughs> All right, any more announcements? Oh, it's in October, just so you know. What is? The Nielsville Woodworking Auction. My parents will probably still live in Nielsville. We're gonna find, we have to like find the thing for that. I'm gonna find what weekend it is because we're actually going to Nielsville for my friend's wedding, so. Same, same weekend, maybe? It might be. That's convenient. If the Mash and Nelson wedding is the same time, we'll be there. So. It's at the same place. How cool would that be? You think Michelle's having a tool expo at her house? Oh, is that her house? Yeah, the wedding. Oh, I thought it was like a hall or something. No. Which would make sense then. Yeah, it's at her house. Like, oh, it's a wedding and this tool expo thing. No. No. On but the same night. I'm sure the tool expo is at the fairground. Ooh. Mm -hmm. You've been there. some tractor pulls. Yeah, you've been there. corn. Yeah. What's the, what's the Grant and Corn Fest thing? Or Loyal Corn Loyal Fest? Loyal Corn Fest? I got all those towns mixed up. Okay, that's upsetting to me. We are not like Loyal. 
Neil's and Loyal are very different, but... I didn't say Neil's and Loyal was saying, like, Grant and Loyal. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is such a horrible inside joke. This is going around. Like, no one gets this. We need to change co courses. <laughs> well, uh, Robert will get it. He'll get it. Yeah, he gets it. And he knows they're not the same. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I like this. So art is like you. Seriously, I see houses, little trees growing out of their gutters, and it boggles my mind. <laughs> Don't be judging the nursery. <laughs> yeah. They're trying. All right. They're trying to get some trees growing so they can plant them in their yard sure. and sell them. <laughs> just a business. That's just a side hustle. Okay. <laughs> I like this from Wes. I see maple sapling in the gutters all of the time near my place. See? Yeah. Apparently it's a new thing. Everyone's doing this hustle. It might be here. in the book. Saying it's in the book. In the book. Ways to do urban lumber. I'll talk to Dave about this. This is the, this, you're missing this chapter. <laughs> Growing trees in your gutter. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to do it. I love it. Okay. Do you have any more announcements? That was all. That I oh, okay. All right. So. Promises. <gasps> Bad news. Loyal Corn Fest is this weekend. Sorry, dude. Well, I guess I know where I'm going. <laughs> After Alice's birthday. Alice's birthday, you're like, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta get some corn. <laughs> I need corn. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually a really good corn. All right, so would you like some real woodworking questions? Nope. No, no. More announcements. More announcements. What else? Marsh's announcements. <laughs> <laughs> would anyone like to announce anything to us? Because Matt wants to keep punting. Um, we need a half an hour of announcements. That's pretty good. That's actually a little wild. Um, I saw actually, where did it go? Did I not heart it? Because I thought, oh, here it is. It's too good this of a is, question. No, this was such a good comment, and I thought it was very sweet. I'll close it down so I can read it, though. From David. Matt, I bought a chair kit last year, and I just, want, I just started my first chair. It's been a rough year, and I want to express how impressed I am with the quality. You should be proud of a good product. Oh, good. I thought that was such a nice comment. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you have to send pictures when you're done. Yeah, hopefully the first one won't. Smoothly for you. And I don't there's know. a little bit of a, I don't want to say learning curve, but mm -hmm. there's it's some intimidation factor, I think, to get over. Right. Once you get that first one together, it's like, oh, that's not too bad. And by your, I mean, I don't know how many you bought four, six, eight, 12. That's true. I doubt you bought 12. <laughs> and any, you did. I don't think anybody bought 12 in the pre orders. Okay. But by, you know, chair four, because you bought at least four. Yeah. You'll be, you'll be getting there. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Let me know how it goes. The rest of it, and definitely send some pictures. It's really cool, like to see like them assemble like next to whatever table mm -hmm. they had made. Right. I would like, like to. see I made that this too. table. Now I finally this chair. Check it out. I'm like, oh, that's freaking awesome. It is. It really is. Because uh, we don't have chairs either. We don't have chairs either, and we need them, and we need a new table. My parents are giving us theirs. Perfect. Not Matt's so, chair kids. You're better off than I am. <laughs> you are, because we're going to be using <laughs> more stuff. So, yeah, hand me downs again. Yeah, we're still a hand-me-down lad. We are. Mm -hmm. So, from Canopy Guy, what is your next tool purchase? Ooh. What should it be? I don't know. Pro you... It's probably going to be a CNC. Really? Yeah. That's, I would never have guessed that. That sounds ridiculous. I mean, I guess. It's ridiculous. I don't know. Is it ridiculous? I mean, you had a CNC. You never used yeah, it. Yeah, bad one. You got rid of it. Because you never used it. Because it, like, broke every time I went to use it. Really? Did it actually break? Yeah. It would uncalibrate itself. It's not because you're... No, I guess you don't use stuff hard, so it's not that. I do use stuff hard. You do? But not that. Not like that. Okay. I go hard also. But... What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, like, our kids use play hard. Like, they play with a toy and they're like, I love you toy so much, and then they crumble it. I don't feel like you're like that, where you're like, Oh, I'm Whoa. definitely like that. You are? Then have they you seen how out? heavy I have to build my trailer? Is that because you're just like... I love you, Tool Crunch. Well, I don't want to worry about it. Like, I guess the outside stuff more than the shop stuff. Right. I'm just saying, like, there are certain but people... Like, I'm like, if, if a log's going to fall, I don't really know. It's, it's going to fall. Well, I get That's different. I'm saying, like... I'd rather not worry about my equipment being hurt by a log falling on it. That, you're talking about something completely different than me. Okay. No, it's like, okay, so you have a tool. No offense to my father, who I know is watching, but he is hard on things. So if my dad would use this tool... He would be hard on it, and, would, break that. and he would break it. You, I feel like as a general rule, you are not hard on things. In here, yes. Yeah, so the fact that the CNC is breaking makes me think it's not user error. I did truly it was breaking. The bell came off. Okay, okay. 
The clamp for, for the belt. So a CNC machine is perhaps your next tool purchase. I'm thinking about it. Thinking hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I gotta see if anybody like around here wants to use one. Why? So you can have like a tool share? Yeah, because I don't like I have like specific ideas for it, but I don't like mm -hmm. a lot of my tools. They can, mm -hmm. it's gonna sit a lot. Mm -hmm. So if someone else wants to come use it, I guess at least it's getting used. Okay. That kind of thing. So if you live in the area and you're like, I wish I had a CNC machine. That that's someone else's house. That's, that's someone else's house. <laughs> and I'd like to sometimes visit it and play with it. And pet it. Send us a message <laughs> so you're into this. I'm into this idea. This sounds fun. All right. Here is a woodworking question from Gary. Is there anything you would change about the design of your lumber stack levers? I'm going to be building quite a few of them soon, and I'm curious if you're still happy with yours. Yes. Generally, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the one little like thing with it now is that if your ground is very uneven to start with, mm -hmm. you may need more travel in the in the screws. So mm -hmm. to do that, you need a bigger tube on top. So it really depends on like how much how much adjustability you need. So with that setup, you have about mm -hmm. I think it's an inch and a half of total travel. So as long as all of your foundations are within an inch and a half of flat of each other, you're okay. But if you have problems getting those foundations within that tolerance, then you're gonna want more travel. Okay. So that's just something to consider. Otherwise, yes, it's amazing. I set up a couple stacks like last month, I think. Mm -hmm. My guess is way better than trying to find levels or whatever. Oh, right, because it's already set. It's like as long as the ground set. Okay. Yeah, you just get the you, just, you worry about each individual foundation separately, and then the levelers take care of all the misalignment of all the foundations. Right. Instead yeah. of trying to level the whole foundation to every other one. That makes sense. It's yeah, it's super convenient. Hmm. So it's worth the effort to do it to make them. Yeah, I gotta do something bigger now, mm -hmm. though. That's kind of where I'm at. A bigger thing, mm -hmm. more permanent mm -hmm. thing, I guess. There you go. All right, from Bill Hewitt. Hi guys, love your channel. I am in Pitawan, Ontario, right? Maybe. Pitawan. 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 I'm so bad at pronouncing stuff. And re recently retired from the Canadian military after 31 years. Wow, that's a long time. Um, Matt, what do you think about the combination plow plane? Do you have that? I don't. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I don't I, have one of those. What is it? I think it has a cult following. Okay. Like the it's like a Stanley 45. Is that what they are? Or something like that. I don't know. I think it's a 45. That just sounds like a gun. It, I, I guess so, yeah. And the 55, depending on what kind of inserts you want. I've never used one. I know that people who like, like them, like, really, really, really like them. Uh, I don't really do anything where I would need to hand plane a groove or a molding okay. profile. So it's not something that really works in my workflow mm -hmm. ever. But it, maybe that's back to tool purchase. Just so I can better answer these questions. Yeah. <laughs> that's honestly why I have a lot. Most of the planes I have, I don't actually use. I just have them because people ask questions about them. Oh, my parents bought them for you. I actually use that one. The one my, my mom and dad bought you? That's one of the ones I actually use. Yeah. But like my number five, I never use it. Ever. I have it like, here's a comparison between what size of a four is versus a five. Okay. In case someone asks that someday. So you're just, you're set. There's a lot of things I have that are just for that. Great. Just to answer questions. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. From green hair. <clears throat> I wonder, do you really have green hair? Have you guys seen the Samson Boat Company restoration of Tally Ho and the live oak slabs they bought to make the ribs out of the ship? Yes. You did? And I haven't, of course, but. I haven't, um. I haven't been keeping up with Leo's progress in a while, but I didn't see that episode. He went down to see, um, what's his name now? Mm -hmm. uh, Cross, Steve Cross, I think it's Steve Cross. Okay. He's down, I think he's in, in um, Georgia maybe, mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere in that area, mm -hmm. but he's got like, the most cobbled together giant bandsaw mill you've ever seen in your life. Like how so? It's made out of a forklift and like some other things, like, but like one of the core components is like a forklift. Really? Yeah. That has to look actually kind of cool. It's... Or scary, maybe both. A little bit of both, I think, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's huge. 
like huge, huge, mm -hmm. and like super, super cobbled together, but like super heavy cobbled together. Like it's cobbled together out of like large equipment, like heavy machinery pieces. And did he do it just because like that's what he had available or because it is a fun, unique thing to do or both? I would say both. He's, he's a pretty awesome character. He's one of the people I found as I was researching my uh, sawmill build. So you did this before you made yours? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's got some, there's some videos of him cutting stuff, I think, from like 2013 or something, where he's like talking to people and showing them around the saw. And right. They're cutting some big, giant, ridiculous thing. Mm. I forget what they're cutting. I don't know. Wood. Cutting wood. I don't know. Yeah, definitely wood. It was Not wood. people. It for sure was wood. <laughs> It's a stationary head saw, so the whole log moves through the, mm -hmm. the the head or whatever you want to call it. Through the blade. Steve Cross. Steve Cross, okay. Cross saw mill. Nice. Somewhere down there. There you go. <laughs> All right, from art. Okay, woodworker-ish. I've watched the clips of Matt walking to the back of the property, and I'm wondering just how hard it would be to put in a driveway. Not hard. Why not? Because it's already graded. Also, he's not putting a driveway where he thinks he's putting a driveway. I'm assuming Art is asking, why don't we don't do that? Oh. Okay, well, I'm not doing it because I don't want to look go. at it. Because this is one, so there you go. The reason we're not where you're probably thinking is because I don't want to look at a driveway. I like looking at grass and beautiful stuff. And where we are going to put a driveway is on the edge of the property, so it's as far away from my eyeballs as possible. I think, what if we, what if we do like an AstroTurf drive through I there? I don't know. No. No. <laughs> no, the thing I love most about this property is that the views are beautiful from the house. And as much as I love Matt, he loves to... Get work done. Yeah, in my eye sockets, so... Oh, well, you know, I want you to know that I'm actually working. <laughs> okay, so he was thinking, no, I'm thinking like how many truckloads of gravel to do the, when we eventually do it. Oh, dude, I have no idea. People who do driveways more than I do will know this. It's like 1,500 feet. That's a little over a quarter mile. To do the edges, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's what it yeah. We're actually probably more like 1,600 feet. Okay. Someone, if you do that, please let us know. It's going to be a very, very... Uh, that, this is why like, it's not going to happen overnight. Cause because I'm going to do an infrastructure for like two years. Mm -hmm. Between... I, I bet you we're going to have, I don't know, fifty to $75,000 in infrastructure before you even put anything back there. Actually, probably, not, probably about 100, actually. Between electric, like its own well, its own septic, and the road. I bet you it's gonna be about 100 grand. I don't wanna hear these numbers. It'll just make me cry. That's what things cost. I don't know. I don't like that. Everyone, like, everyone likes to like, forget about infrastructure. Yeah, I feel like that. It, I, I mean, I'm even thinking about it for our own like renovation inside the house, where it's like, like uh, we gotta think about the fact that getting you know, just countertops, those are expensive. And all those little things, they add up really fast. But you need them. Yep. You need a fridge. So, yeah. yeah. So is your big chainsaw a 75 or a 90? The big one? The big, yeah. big one? Yeah. 90. Big, big. 90? Yeah. There you go. That was an easy answer. I like those. I got to hang those up again. They're still on the floor still. Oh, okay. So from Jamie, love the channel. Have you considered adding an extension bed to your mill to mill longer or two logs or would it just be too much hassle? I'm gonna build one in a couple weeks. You are? Yeah, to cut the mm -hmm. cherry log and the one that Dan brought over <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Okay. I'm probably gonna do like a four foot bed extension. Just like mm -hmm. a shorter one because I'm still working with just the driveway. So that'll take me about 16 feet, which I think is probably fine. I can, and like with like, Oh, you want to make some long, you cut some longer stuff? I'll just make another extension if I need it. Mm -hmm. If I need to get over 16 feet or something. But uh, when we do this giant complex in the back <laughs> where everything lives, <laughs> I'll be doing a 40 foot bed to the saw. And what do you have now? 16. Oh, so that's a huge difference. Yeah. And that's massive. Like yeah, that'll allow me to build beams oh. so I can do the shop. Oh, I was gonna ask, do you want to do beams? But yeah, for the shop, that makes sense. So, so I can cut all the beams mm -hmm. out of 40 foot logs. <laughs> oh, wow. Or, you know, three, three mm -hmm. 12 footers at a time or something like that. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, um, here we go. 
from Wes. Did, what did your kids do to the sticker on your bench? Draw on it? Is there a sticker on the bench? Probably. Yes, the probably this thing. The uh, slab stitcher inlay. Oh, yeah. They gave me some more hair. Max, I mean, JR did that. When he learned to write, suddenly we found the name JR all over the house. A lot in Matt's shop. The old house has JR everywhere. <laughs> In the shop, on the shop door. Yeah. But they're like, what is this J and his backwards R? <laughs> yeah, because it was a backwards R. Or is it backwards J? Yeah. Someone's backwards. Mm. It was the R. Well, no, it was the J for a long time. And he went both. It's on a skid steer a few places. Because yeah. mm -hmm. what he does is he finds my paint markers and uses those yeah. to draw on everything. Everything. It's like the trailer had it before I painted it. Uh -huh. Just, you find it everywhere. <laughs> there you go, I can write now. Okay. Got to write everywhere. It's okay because like it's words. Well, it's my name. It's okay to write on things because they're letters. <laughs> they're not just scribbles. They're not squiggles because he knows he can't do scribbles. Like that is not allowed. But like writing his name, it feels like well. You taught me how to do you this. You encouraged me to write my you name. You wanted me to do this clearly because <laughs> you taught me how to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. you made a point of teaching it to me. All right, so I have to go up soon. But what is today? Today is Brandon Lano's birthday. That is not my question. <laughs> what is today? Today is the anniversary of us meeting. Uh, 20 years ago. 2006. I can't do the math right now. 2006. I'm not trying. It's a lot of years. We're old people now. It's like 12 years? 15 years. 15? Yeah, more than that, actually. Now I think about it. I think it's been spot, together. On, spot on 15 years. Yeah. There you go. 15 years ago, we met for the first time. Woof. In the basement of Whitehall in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And we cooked dinner together because we were on like a leadership team together. I cooked dinner. I ate dinner. I cooked dinner with other people. This wasn't like a sexist thing. I like wanted to cook. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we all cooked dinner. And I remember like talking to this guy. Okay. Hoping the eye with that thing. And he was like super, super tan. And I remember being like, what is up with this dude? And you were just like, yeah, I just like hung by like the pool all summer because I didn't have a job. Just like lay on the pool. It was a good summer. Ate <laughs> yes. waffles. Yeah. He just kind of like bragged about that. And he like barely remembers anything. I, I don't remember any of that. I remember Tony was there. Yeah, Tony was there. And he, he, the only thing he remembered is my um, mother's maiden name. I don't know why. I have a very weird memory. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very good at remembering like weird little details about things. Yeah. Fun fact someone's name, not a weird little detail. <laughs> Because I'm terrible at remembering names. Yeah, I don't think he knew my name, but he knew my mother's maiden name. But I can remember any weird little thing you said about something yeah. that I thought was interesting. Yeah. No so, problem. Because it was like for, because I was an RA and Matt was on like a leadership team thing that we were all working on. And so they did a lot of like, what are those things called? Uh, icebreakers. All that fun stuff. So for some reason, because yeah. of that. Introverts hey, love icebreakers. Yeah, Matt hates, hates it. So. Hey, little pig, you want to come say hi really fast? You want to tell them? What are you gonna, What are you in? Come over here. You want to tell them what you're oh, in? Boy. Oh, God, Daddy. What are you in? I'm in <laughs> a play. That's right. Do you remember what your role is? What's your Cow. role? Cow. Cow what? Patty boy. Is there a reason we're doing a baby? Yeah, there's a reason why we're talking so slowly. Cow patty boy. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to get up because it's already five o'clock. So, you want to finish it up with Dad? Mm, yeah. 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 Okay. I can do without it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mama's gonna go relieve Caitlin. <laughs> Tell Daddy he has any more questions, so you can sit down. We have questions for a six-year-old. Is that what we're doing? No. All right. My foot is. Yeah. And also, and if you cook a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And if you get to break the fur claw, it's like this long. The fur claw? What yeah. You what? If you cook a Tyrannosaurus Rex. A Tyrannosaurus oh, definitely. Rex? Do not cook a Tyrannosaurus that Rex. Is... Because if you, if, you, if you break its fur claw for good luck, it's like this long. So good luck breaking that. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, if you cook a Tyrannosaurus Rex, that's going to happen. Oh, I don't know what it's from. Jared, tell your joke. A dinosaur would play the piano, but he didn't want to play. So he started throwing a fit. He said, Mom, I don't want to play the beat. Hey! I can play! I can play! <laughs> okay.
Okay. Let's grab a few more little questions here. That's how wings are formed. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Brian says, thanks for showing me how to sharpen a chisel. This was crafted at that very moment. I've been blessed ever since. Yeah, I, I believe it. If you actually can get that chisel actually sharp, where's my chisel? When these things are actually sharp, you're like, oh, this is actually like a useful tool. Otherwise, not fun to use at all. So I'm glad you're able to get things uh, sharpened. From Gary, how's the serpentine chest of drawers going? Pretty good. But he didn't want to play, and he started throwing up it. What? <laughs> and then he flew away, and he said, I don't want to play the piano! I am uh, just about done with the build. I have to make the top, which is going to go pretty quickly, and then I'm just fitting drawers. And I'm pretty much done after that. So it's actually feeling good to be at that uh, that point in the build, like to the final details part. Yep, and I have four loose tooth. Yeah, everyone else have dinosaur cooking questions? We have an expert here. Okay, this is for you. Is your dad a cool dad? Yeah. Yeah, he's all right. He has some stuff. Okay, here we go. This is for you. You ready? Yeah. Okay, this is from Chris. Chris is asking you, uh, the crib that I built for you, do you have any suggestions to improve it? Can you make it, anything to make it better? Hmm. The crib? You haven't been in the crib for a long time. Your sister's in the crib hey, now. Hey, maybe, maybe we could like put like baby bottles in it and, uh, and make arms go out and make it feed it, feed the babies. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Okay, so a self-feeding system Yeah. inside the crib. Yeah. Actually, that's not a bad idea. That's like a really good idea. Yeah, so you don't have to feed, feed the baby. So you don't have to feed the baby. The baby gets fed while it's asleep? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that works. I, I like that. And if it leaks in the house, it also has an arm, arm, arm and you pull the lever and then an umbrella goes up if it's leaking in the house when it's raining. Okay, I, I don't know why the roof is suddenly leaking over the crib, <laughs> but I like where the innovation head is at. It's good. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and Chris says, thanks for answering. Why do you have a, like, you have a banana sticker on your chest? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's this from? What are you guys eating? An apple. <laughs> An apple sticker? Yeah. I put that on my Apple laptop. What do you think of that? Yeah. Okay. Should we go up and see what your mom's doing? Yeah. Okay, we should go on with the show. Well, right here's now. a question from Rob. What will you do with the next balloon landing? Do you think the balloons are ever going to land here again? I think they will because... Yeah? Good pretty boy, what happens if it does... And what happens if they drop snow on us? You think the balloon's gonna drop snow on us? Yeah, maybe it collected snow in the North Pole and then threw, threw it on us. You think you really you think the balloons went all the way to the North Pole and then all the way down here? Yeah. With snow. Yeah. Okay. Was that fun though that one day that they did when the balloons landed here? That was pretty fun, huh? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, but he didn't want to play the piano. I don't know what that means. The okay. raptor started playing the piano, but he didn't want to play. And then he started throwing a bit. Mom, I don't want to play the... Hey, I can fly! And then he flew out the door, out of the room in the door, and then he said, I don't want to play the piano! Okay. <laughs> Fire away. Ben says that you're almost as loud as your mom. I think you're louder than your mom. <laughs> yeah. 40 foot log is going to need a bigger trailer. That's why I want that back area to be semi accessible so I can get it, everything shipped in on or shipped in, trucked in on semi trucks. All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for this week. I hope you all have a fantastic mm -hmm. weekend. Do you have anything to say, everybody? You say good night. Have a good weekend. Night. Have a good weekend. And if you cook a Tyrannosaurus Rex, do not. Because if your dad decides to cook a Tyrannosaurus Rex for dinner, tell him why.
there are you you cooking a Tyrannosaurus Rex and on top of uh, if you cook, then, if you cook a T Rex, people will be very what? Scared. Scared and surprised <laughs> and confused probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if you break the first thing off, good luck. It's like this long, so good luck breaking that. Good luck breaking that thing up. All right. Have a fantastic week. week. Well, have a fantastic weekend, everybody. See you uh, sometime next week, I guess. Yep.